What's up guys, welcome back to Power Stroke Tech Talk with A-Rod, your number one stop to figuring out your Power Stroke. Today we got four victims. We got my favorite. We're going to talk about the 6.7. We're going to talk about the not so exciting for a tech to work on, 3.2. Uh oh, I know there's some people out there that let my 6.4. We're going to talk about that. And then the second favorite of them all, the 6L. We're going to go over some of the design changes, go over some of the uh, systems on both um, uh, first Super Duty uh, engines. I should say not first Super Duty engines, but um, our first ones, this one, I don't know. I don't know about this one. I'm not really too keen on it. But uh, we're going to go over it because there's some people that got them. I want them to be um, well-rounded in their 3-2 uh, knowledge. And then the best is grab yourself something to drink, sit down. We're going to be here for a minute. And, uh, yeah, Milwaukee, I want to say thank you and a shout-out to them. Hopefully you're going to be sponsoring this channel soon. And we're going to have some tools sit up here. We're going to do a review. So here we go. Power strokes. Sweet. Here we go. 6 0. This, uh, this is what we grew up on. Um, we got these in class when we were first learning about this engine. And um, yeah, I think it was uh, beginning of 04 we had this class. Or there's some things that they changed as they were uh, in production of the 6 0. I thought this was kind of cool. Uh, I gave you a little chart here and it tells you that the 60 makes 325 horsepower at 3300 rpm and 560 foot pounds at 2000 rpm um, you don't usually see that chart in the workshop manual or anything so it's kind of kind of cool 60 has been out for a while everybody um, well for the most part everybody knows you know where all the component locations are um, glow plug harnesses glow plug module um, I don't really think anybody's had to deal with the emissions label. Um, I know you get them when you have reman engines. You guys can kind of see on the upper oil pan, they deleted uh, six bolts up here that they didn't need uh, to utilize um, after they made, you know, so-and-so engines after, you know, such a build date. Here's the camshaft looks like. Here's some... Uh, different piston changes you can see how the bowls a little bit bigger here on the right piston glow plugs are a little different you can see that's why they had to do it um, and then they went over here and made the water pump bigger um, I've had a couple trucks come in where uh, the thickum somebody has hasn't clipped this connector in all the way and it was only running on four cylinders so if you guys take your thick out make sure to seat those those connectors you can see there's a tab here and a tab right on top of that X you got to squeeze both of them and the, and they pull down and out of the thick one of the things you guys will notice when you take off a turbo the um, if you have a first gen 60 you'll have a quick disconnect oil supply to the turbo and the later ones had an 8 milli bolt holding this to the oil cooler. So that was one of the things that they changed as they kept uh, making these things. Um, here's a little picture of where that bolts down into. A little 8 milli bolt. These are one of the things I notice on the engine harness. When you have uh, an early 6L come in. The injector harness clips are always facing forward. Um, they actually changed it so that the serviceability is a little easier to get to to remove these clips because sometimes we'll have PTOs mounted on this valve cover and you know cannot get a tool in here to depress that that uh, little clip. So they changed that. Um, did some wiring harness weaseled around some different things um, you move over here to the high pressure oil cover high pressure oil pump cover they changed uh, 
took a sleeve out of the cover. Um, the early ones had a cast iron cover, which is this, and an aluminum body pump. The oh for the later the late late oh fours and oh five oh six oh sevens eight nines tens and you know into the econo lines the high pressure oil system had an aluminum pump cover and a cast iron pump those are the good ones these early ones with the cast iron cover those aluminum pumps they're not the most robust component uh when coming uh, or I'm sorry, not coming. When talking about the repairs that I have seen on the high-pressure oil system, I've replaced a lot more aluminum pumps on these setups because uh, check ball falling out, the pump not building enough volume to sustain injection. But uh, nonetheless, these are some of the things that we have to deal with when we get these trucks in. So moving right along, we got the air management system and. Uh, can see that's how it sits up We've got the intake manifold turbo the up pipes manifold you can see the little itty bitty egr cooler sitting in there um, here's a eight milli bolt that they just added on for the turbocharger oil supply uh, that's kind of actually a cool picture so you guys can have a visual of you know what we're looking at a lot of the newer 60s got rid of the egr throttle body they uh Emissions Cal didn't call for it, and in the latter part of 04 and 05, 06, none of them had. Um, even the intake elbow was redesigned because it didn't sit on top of this no more. So this actually had to be taller to take up, you know, that size of this block of aluminum. Uh, let's see what else did they do here? A couple different brackets for the Fickum. Um, the crankcase was a little redesigned going from the first to the, the, the second redesign. Um, this, this tube's a little different. Um, here's the EGR cooler. Different length, different size. You can see internally on, on when you look into that way of the old cooler, it looks like a bunch of straws. The newer one um, is uh, definitely a little same concept, but it's different design inside. It looks more like a you know, radiator. Um, I know everybody's had to try to fight these bastard bolts from taking the turbo off. Um, O3s go in from the side, and the newer ones go down. I don't think they have a picture of the older one. Here's the pedestal. We used to use spacers. They come in the bag of uh, turbo mounting hardware, but some trucks, the O3 ones had spacers, the newer ones didn't. Different pedestal, different new turbo. Here's that aluminum pump I was talking about. If you guys know what the cast iron one looks like then you'd know that this is uh, the troublesome one. Uh, here's our branch tube. So our oil our oil filter sits up here, gets pumped up, crankshaft spinning, oil pump spinning, oil gets sucked up through our oil pan, through our front cover, everything, all the freshly pumped oil gets pumped into here there's a screen that sits down in here goes up into the oil filter does its little cleaning filtering da 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 please make sure you use the right filter goes back down through that screen and right into the high pressure oil pump so any garbage that comes in our oil filter or we don't use the correct filter and doesn't get uh, filtered correctly goes right here and trashes the IPR valve and this pump and ultimately can go up to our injectors and contaminate those. All right, we got EGR TP, got our glow plug connectors, EGR throttle plate, and actuator. Uh, what else we got here? Got the high pressure oil pump cover, glow plug control module. Uh, those connectors, and then, um, it also goes in that vehicle. There are just a couple things different. We got different charge air cooler, different wiring harness. Power's a little different because we are in an Econoline, so it's a little detuned just, uh, for the vehicle's application. Um, what else do we got on here? Um, 
This is a little longer than I had anticipated. But I'm going to go through these because you guys can pause it and check them out if you want. Um, the Econoline here doesn't have uh, that top engine mounted uh, oil filter. It's actually down here on the side. So there's a bunch of tubes that it's got to go on the back of the engine in the valley under the turbo and into this little, um, they call it a remote oil filter header. And it's the tubes go in there and that sits on top of the oil cooler. So um, what else we got? Um, high pressure oil systems, pretty much the same. ICP sensors the same. Um, oil fills a little different. We got different uh, um, orientation, bend, angle on the fitting that connects to the valve cover. Our super duties are straight up and down. This one is angled to the front because we got a tube that comes all the way forward and goes to the cowl. That's where we fill our oil in. Um, and that's pretty much it. We got uh, just some, some no start diagnosis, but uh, you guys can actually go and check out my other videos. I got a lot of uh, how to check for fuel in the oil, how to check for combustion gases in the fuel system. Um, uh, high pressure oil system diagnosis checking for high pressure oil leak. I got a great video on that one. You guys have to check out um, And that's pretty much it. So we're gonna move on to our another Candidate, let's just see what else we got in here and just a bunch of torque specs I'll go through it so you guys can check it out I don't know if everybody's ever seen this one before Single alt single alt. What else we got dual alt you guys can check it out and Econoline, Econoline, yeah, that's it. All right, six foe. All right, there she is in all her her international splendor. Gosh, just makes my stomach hurt. I can't stand these things. But anywho, here's that same chart for the six O. You guys can check out those stats. Um. You guys can check out those ones too. Sorry about the light. There we go. You guys can check it out. Um, engine orientation, standing in front of the vehicle. This is the fan. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Make sure you guys know your orientation if you're doing glow plugs or fuel injectors. Um, uh, we got EGR coolers. Those are kind of obvious up here. Um, what are the things we got? Some up pipes. Got a new sensor in the up pipe. We didn't have that on the 6.0. Um, we got uh, no longer any high pressure oil. This was our first high pressure fuel done not in house but done by uh, international. This engine's also in uh, max force, medium duty, um, like delivery trucks. Uh, same thing, just different uh, programming and odds and ends, heater hoses and connectors. Um, for the most part, the 6.0 and the 6.4 from from the cylinder head block down is pretty much the same. Uh, the upper end's different, different valve train, different uh, cylinder heads. Uh, I'm sure the camshaft might be a little different. Lifters, I think, are the same. Crankshaft, I'm not 100%, but it may be the same. Um, for the most part, the upper end is what has changed. Intake, turbos. Um, here's the 6.0 versus the 6.4 flex plate. We got 6 on the 6.0 and we got 6.4, I'm sorry, we got 8 bolts, 8 nuts for the 6.4. The yellow circle added for bolt circle reference. We don't want anybody to put it in the wrong bolt holes. Um, check out the head bolt difference. A little longer for the 6.0. Um... Cooling system flow, you guys can check that out. I don't know if anybody's ever seen an, seen an exploded view of the coolant flow through the cylinder head. But uh, here's what I was talking about, the oil flow. Pretty much the same thing for a 6.4 as the 6.0. Uh, front cover is different, but pretty much the same, uh, same principle. Um, if anybody's ever wondered what their ejector sleeves look like, that's just what it looks like in the cylinder head. That's a Preston fit with some... Uh, sealant around those edges. Um, again, here's our oil flow, similar to the 6.0. Crankshaft spinning, oil pump spinning, sucking oil from our crankcase, and up into the filter housing, get filtered, goes right to our turbos, and then uh, through the oil cooler and all that, that jazz. 
Um, here is the Girotor oil pump. We got uh, another lubrication picture. Here's what the front cover looks like, metal gasket between the block and the uh, aluminum front cover. Here's our bed plate. Um, I've had to do a lot of 6-4 in and out upside down reseals because these two spaghetti strap uh, sealing gaskets like to pull out and start seeping oil. So I got a little remedy that I use to take care of that. Um, here's our high pressure fuel system picture. A um, little different than what we are accustomed to. This was the first year we had to uh, be very cautious as to our fuel quality and how often we are changing our fuel filters because of the, the tight tolerances in here getting us to almost 30,000 PSI. So here is our air management. It's kind of the uh, same picture as the 6.0, a little different. A lot more uh, garbage here. I'm trying to cram 10 pounds of shit in a one pound bag, but uh, yeah, that's how it works. Air filter, everybody knows where that is on there. Intercooler is right up front. Um, if anybody's ever have to take their intercooler out, make sure you get this clamp right there. Not that clamp, this clamp. This clamp is on the bottom, hitting all the road, road salt, and it's probably rotted and rusted to hell. It's not coming off. You can't reuse it and get a new one. Uh, double turbo, double turbo. Driver side is a high turbo. Passenger side is low, low pressure turbo. One turbo feeds the other turbo to decrease that uh, spool up time. So we got throttle response and zero lag. Not zero, but minimal. Um, you can see the VGT vanes similar to the 6.0. I'm still using uh, oil flow to do so. Here's our EGR valve. Have replaced a bunch of those on 6.4. Pain in the butt. Check out my vid. Um, fuel, high pressure fuel system, like I said, this was the first engine uh, from the power stroke that we had on here for high pressure fuel. Um, kind of what the inside of the high pressure pump looks like. There's three, three uh, piston design. Some really sophisticated injectors, they're expensive. These fuel lines are one time use only, guys, so do not reuse the fuel lines. Um, I just had a truck running with the valve covers off because I thought I had a fuel leak coming from right around that nut, but we didn't. Uh, this is what the internals of the fuel injectors look like. And then some of the electrical components pretty much stay the same. We got a cam sensor, crank sensor, so did the 6.0, EGR valve, temperature sensors, pressure sensors, a bunch of inputs to the PCM, inputs to the glow plug control module. Um, fuel rail temp, fuel rail pressure, we didn't have that on the 6.0. Uh, both of them had mass airflows. Both of them got MAP and exhaust back pressure. A um, couple of the other sensors that will put you in the limp mode, we got EGTs and EGR temperature sensors. And if any of these read 1,000 degrees for a given amount of time, um, it'll throw you into limp mode. I've had to do a couple of those, uh, not a couple, multiples of those. Um, here's what the PCM looks like. That's actually up underneath the cowl on the passenger side, right behind the air filter. Please, please, please make sure you're using the FL2016 and the correct fuel filter. Guys, trust me, this is what I do. Just spend the extra couple bucks and get the motorcraft stuff. Um, da, 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 da. Fuel system tubes. Remember I said you guys can't reuse those. When you do service a 6.4, please make sure to cap off all. If it's not these caps, put on something that will go over these fittings so you don't get any contamination. Um, not if you're replacing any fuel system components, but what happens if you have an oil leak here at a cover or the rear cover or someplace in the engine valley that you'd have to take all this stuff off, cover them up. Um, going through telling you how to lift the turbo. There's a special bracket you got to put on. Two guys can do it if you got the cab off. Might need a cherry picker if you're doing it with the cab on. How to replace um, some oil seals in the crossover tube. The biggest joke tool I've ever used. That's going to break your first time. Um, although Diesel Tech Ron had a pretty good tool um, and it's not the Ford tool. So if you want to see a tool or remove the EGR valve, check out Diesel Tech Ron's uh, YouTube channel. Um, RIP Diesel Tech Ron. Um, the 
two things on a 6-4 that is right-hand thread. The two things on a 6-4 that are right-hand thread is the high-pressure pump, high-pressure fuel pump gear bolt and the fan clutch. Two things on the six four right hand thread. Two things on the six. Two things on a power stroke that's right hand thread six four only. Gear bolt, fan clutch, six four right hand thread. And uh, same intake gasket. Here's our pipes. You gotta put that one on first, then the second, then the third. New gaskets, new bolts, and here are some uh, torque specs sequence and. Um, just some special torque stuff diagram just some wiring okay next
All right, here we go. My favorite, favorite, favorite. This is what it's all about, right here, baby. Right there. This is the meat and potatoes of this channel. 6.7, right there, a B20. Turbo diesel, the best one, man. Okay, let's see what we got. Everybody knows about these. Let's check out these numbers we're working with. We got the pickups and the cab chassis. Cab chassis is a little detuned. Look how much horsepower we're making here. We're like double, almost double. And then what the 6.0 and 6.4s are making. Cylinder ID, way different. Front of the engine, the fans here. We started the passenger side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, I kind of like this way. That's how our gasoline ones are. International is the one who uh, liked making everything uh, the opposite way that we were looking at in the previous ones. Definitely can dig this stand. I got one. You guys should get it if you got to ever mount a 6.7. Huge. Look at that thing. Man, massive. Massive. Awesome engine. Great power. Um, looks even better on the floor with the trans coupled to it. Just a monster, man. Love this engine. Love the truck. I'm glad it was built in-house. They did a, a phenomenal job. Um, the first ones, 11s. Um, checking out that thing's huge. Uh, cylinder heads, all aluminum cylinder head. Way different, way lighter. Um, way easier to clean compared to a 6.4 and a 6.0. Um, rocker assemblies, valve train, everything is completely different. Uh, lifters, yeah, I think those are different too. I don't think they're using the same lifters as the uh, 6.4 and 6.0. Uh, different block, we got a, um, a composite graphite block. Um, different pistons, different connecting rods, everything's pretty beefy on this engine. Uh, what else do we got here? Different looking front cover. Oil cooler mounted to the side of the lower oil pan, the upper oil pan. Uh, vacuum pump. One of the things they changed was going from a composite lower oil pan to a metal oil pan, and it uh, deleted this quick disconnect or quick release oil plug. Um, it is a 16 mil bolt now. Uh, those oil pans are no longer serviced. You only can get the metal ones. If this one breaks, you yes, you can uh, put a metal one on there with no issues. Uh, you will have to use silicone to seal it. This one actually has a rubber gasket. Um, check the cooling flow out. We got two thermostats in the primary system. We got a thermostat in the secondary cooling system. Uh, the thermostat and the secondary cooling system, well actually both of them, there are ones loaded, located here on the hot side, one's located here on the cool side. Um, that's what feeds coolant to our fuel cooler, our EGR cooler, trans cooler, our CAC. Um, some of the primary coolant goes through the uh, EGR cooler as well um, underneath the, or on the valve cover on the passenger side. Uh, charger cooler looks completely different. So here it's a uh, fluid to air cooler. All the other ones were air to air. So we got a little different cooling uh, strategy going on here to cool our, our uh, compressed charge going back into the engine. Here's our secondary thermostats. You guys can check those out. Right there, you see 140, 113, they open up. Never had to replace those. Uh, they do come in the radiator uh, if you have to replace the secondary radiator. Uh, all of our clips for um, all of our hoses for our cooling system are all quick disconnects. No big deal. Love them. Come out well. Make sure you replace the uh, O-rings inside those hoses when you remove them. I have had them leak. Come back on me. Uh, oil pump is integrated into the front cover. Um, it cannot be serviced separately. It has to be replaced uh, with the cover. So keep, uh, take that into note if you have uh, an issue with that. But if you have an issue with that, I'm sure you got other issues going on with the engine. So uh, that oil pump's just not going to fail by itself. Uh, air intake system, air management, a lot of stuff. CAC. Air filter, we got a little pre-filter foam. We do have a uh, throttle body on this on this engine again. Uh, they deleted it and brought it back. 
on the 6.4 and kept it for the 6.7. Just emissions requires us to have that that door on there to help control that that intake temp flow EGR recirculation all that and then over here we got our crankcase vent I don't know if you guys have ever seen a cutaway of that I haven't that's kind of cool um, the new ones they're gone to a filter now there's a bunch of bolts you guys can check out my video I have on that there's a one two three four five six seven bolts that hold this lid on now and you can actually replace that cover um, our intake, I'm sorry, our valve cover is now our air intakes into the engine because our exhaust manifolds are no longer on the outside, they're on the inside. So that makes our intake get flopped too. So uh, when servicing these, you know, we got to make sure we cover these and nothing's going to be getting dropped down in there when we're servicing uh, said turbocharger. Glow plug control modules underneath the uh, battery tray on the passenger side. You can see this is the washer solvent bottle. Um, turbocharger, um, again, is using oil, just like our um, 6.4s. Uh, actually, our 6.4 used an electric uh, uh, VGT actuator. Our 6.0 and our 6.7 uses somewhat similar VGT actuator. Um, the 3.2 diesel and the 6.4 diesel, I would say, are the same as far as controlling the turbo. 6.0, 6.7, using uh, the VGT, just like we were accustomed to. Uh, EGR cooler, you guys have seen me do a bunch of videos on that. Um, haven't replaced the guts. We got the EGR cooler core. We got the EGR cooler bypass. Gasket between there. Gasket between here. And this is the actual EGR valve. Um, I have replaced a bunch of valves, not for actually failing, but these bolts breaking off in the valve when taking this up pipe off and repairing these broken bolts in the manifold. Um, kind of a pain, but you guys can check it out. I got a kit I do to, uh, I use to repair that. Um, here it is talking about the bypass. I was just explaining to you guys. Got an EGT, I'm sorry, engine coolant temperature sensor in there to uh, verify we have, you know, the proper temps coming in and out of the cooler. Uh, fuel system, pretty sophisticated on this one. Um, hmm. Why is that red, guys? Uh, two fuel filters on this. Um, it can be left loose. These are kind of tight to uh, put the filter back in, the cap twisting it. So make sure you... Um, check it out before you loosen it. Make sure you see where the stop is so you can tighten it all the way to the stop and not, um, you know, leave it loose and then come see me because it's sucking air. But uh, fuel system again, fuel cooler on the frame underneath the driver's seat. You guys can check it out. This would be like the drive shaft, the prop shaft right here. So it's, you know, right between that and the frame. Uh, fuel system on this is all external, obviously, um, so you guys can see if you have any uh, fuel line leaks um, and nothing internal like the 6.4 was, creating that oil growth if you have a leak. Uh, two fuel rails on the side, um, driver side is longer, we got the FRP and the PCV um, uh, sensors and solenoids on that rail and then we have uh, a line set that goes over to the passenger side to feed this these four cylinders uh, injectors are kind of uh, similar to the 6.4 um, PCM same side same place as the 6.4 uh, these are some of the electrical component graphs that you would expect to see when measuring temperatures uh, accelerator pedal position um, got a integrated, well, you can remove the volume control valve on the high pressure fuel pump. This is what you remove on a 6.7 to check for metal glitter paint if you have fuel uh, system failure. Um, same things we've already talked about. Uh, glow plug control module, we got the TCM, actually sits on a bracket just uh, on the driver side of the frame rail. Um, Big thing with the exhaust, the difference between the pickup and the cab chassis, the SCR and DPF are swapped on the cab chassis and pickup. So if you're replacing EGTs, make sure you're replacing one, two, three, four, one, two, four, three, 
depending on the year, if it's a cab chassis pickup, sometimes these are switched. They're flip flopped, so you got to make sure you're replacing the right one. Um, our indicative Cobra head down pipe. Haven't really had too many issues with those. Um, I have had the pipe that connects to that. There's a gasket inside there. It's a two-piece down pipe. That gasket had blew out, and I had to replace that pipe that connects to this. This stayed on. I replaced that bottom pipe. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, our oil viscosities for the temps. Def pump. Make sure you're using the correct diesel exhaust fluid. Just talking about our twist mixer and our SCR and what that actually does with the DEF. Crank seal, special tools, removers, pressure testing the EGR cooler. If you got to remove the injectors, there's a special tool for that. Removing the engine, lifting eye for that. Um, I have yet to see this valve spring compressor, which is actually pretty sweet looking. I've used my own, but that's actually pretty neat. And uh, compression adapter, that's about it, you guys. I thank you very much for watching. I know this is a long, long-ass video. Uh, it's the last video for 2018. Going to be jumping into 2019 Power Stroke Repairs. Tell me what you think about this in the comment section below. Check out my Instagram at Power Stroke at PTT underscore W underscore A-Rod. Check me out putting up teasers throughout the week for Friday's vid. Have a great, safe, happy new year, and I will see you next Friday. Power Stroke out.